Okay, we are making homemade tamales today. First off, you need to wash your corn shells. And if you don't know what they look like, they, sorry for the mess in my kitchen, I'm canning and baking and all kinds of stuff. If you don't know what they look like in the package, this is what they look like. Corn shucks. And they come like this in a package. They're like a couple of bucks at Walmart or wherever you choose to get them. Okay, you need to take and rinse them very well in hot water. Then take and place them in a bowl because you don't want them to dry out while you're preparing the rest of your stuff, but you do want them clean. Now then, we are going to be steaming them in the oven instead of doing them in a great big pan. Now then, I know my kitchen is a little dark right now because lighting issues and all of my stuff is sitting over there, organized clutter. I'm doing a lot of baking and canning and stuff today. This here is an inexpensive cookie rack. You can get them at Walmart. I think they're three to a box for like seven or eight dollars. And this here is a deep pan that I got. It's old. It's got burn marks in it and stuff. I mean, it's, it's seen its better days. <laughs> it's a turkey pan. And it's a few inches shallow. I'd say probably two inches. A good thumb length deep, you know. And you'll need this to bake your tamales in the oven. And what we're going to do is fill this up with a little bit of water, probably about an inch of water, making sure, since this has legs on it, as you can tell, this is sitting upright in the pan. You'll need those because you don't want your tamales touching the water. The point of this cooking demonstration is to show you how to steam your tamales in the oven. Now then, over here we have the vegetables. The vegetables are green bell peppers and the little red bell peppers and the orange and yellow. Um, I bought a bag of them at Walmart for like two or three dollars. I don't remember how much I paid for them. But uh, also you on the, oh before I forget on the bell peppers if you take a bell pepper and let me get a knife out of here you take a bell pepper and you cut it open okay you shouldn't do that on your counter to leave marks you will see there is white stuff in there with seeds clean the seeds out the best you can it doesn't matter if they get into your uh, stuffing or not. Clean the seeds out, but make sure that you take and you get all that white membrane out. Because the membrane is what makes the, the bell peppers bitter. If you, if you don't get that membrane out of there, your bell peppers will, will have a bitter taste, or your stuffing will have a bitter taste. So make sure you get all the membrane out. And I add one of these to my uh, vegetable stuffing. And this here is just uh, an inexpensive thing. It comes in a box of like six or seven of them. And I put that in with all of my vegetables, which is like six small tomatoes, one medium-sized onion, and um, two pods of garlic. I cut that cut that up and put it in my food processor and um, you don't have to have a food processor it just makes it a whole lot easier now then on your masa there are instructions on the side of the bag this is the brand that I use you use whatever brand you want but there are instructions on how to do the masa now then uh, for the masa if you don't want to use lard or butter I use Crisco um, that just, to me, it tastes better. And season it to taste. I mean, you know, it's, it's not rocket science. I mean, you can do whatever you want. It's your kitchen. Now then, I put a wet paper towel over this a little bit ago. And um, the way to test this, the way I test it, is you take and roll it around in your hand. And if you can make a pretty firm ball without it sticking, and, and if it can hold its shape a little bit, you're good to go. Okay, now then, over here to make that masa so good, 
you'll want to save the broth off of your meat. This is the broth. This is chicken broth. This is my beef broth because I cook chicken and beef. And this here, believe it or not, is vegetable broth. This came off of the vegetables. Okay, now then, on the vegetables, you'll see that they're kind of red and green and yellow in color. But I have an extra strainer here. Drain off all the excess water off of the vegetables after you cook them for about 15 to 20 minutes. This is a must. You don't want soggy vegetables. Okay, and I ground my chicken up in the food processor, and I ground my vegetables up too. And here is the beef. Sorry for the lighting. Got a light out. And the next thing is, is I guess we're ready to drain these off and dry them off a little bit and start cooking. Uh, well, rolling. We'll get to the cooking part in a little while. So, for now, I'm going to get off the camera and roll me up some tamales and show you how I stick them in the oven. I hope this video helps. If you like it, please subscribe or if you have any questions, um, leave me a comment. I'll be more than glad to help you.